where I get set free. This is where your love is calling me. I am ready. Oh, say this is where my heart will. This is where my heart will be again. This is where you get set free.
You know, there's something called faith in praise. There's something called faith in praise. Praise is not just singing a song. There's faith attached to what we say. There were some people in the Bible that waited for a breakthrough and there was others that created their breakthrough. Through their faith and their desperation and their sound, their sound, their sound, their sound, their cry. It stopped Jesus in his tracks. Through their sound, the sound that they released. Jesus, thou son of David. Jesus, thou son of David. Don't let him pass you by.
comes our help. Our help comes from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. And he will not suffer your foot to be moved. The Lord that keeps thee, he doesn't slumber or sleep. In the river, in the wilderness, in the desert, wherever you are, Keep your eyes on Jesus, He'll never let you down, I've seen it for myself, He'll never leave nor forsake you, keep your eyes on Jesus, He'll see how dark it looks lift your hands and sing with me you deserve the glory
is not solid. There are things you're going to go through, you're not going to make it if your faith in God is not strong. Your faith in God will determine, like Peter, when, when after Jesus told him three times you're going to deny me, and after that he ran away ashamed and totally broken. When Jesus restored him, the same Peter, because he was with Jesus for three years, but he had not got that revelation yet. After he went, Jesus restored him, the same Peter, when history says, when they went to crucify him, he said, I'm not worthy to die as my Lord died. Turn me upside down. What a difference. The difference is your revelation to Jesus, your faith in God is what's going to make you strong. And I tell you now, there's people in our church right now that are unshakable, unmovable. Nothing could move them. There's nothing this world can bring into their lives that can move them or shake them. But then there are others who are weak in their faith where everything and anything can move you, uproot you from church, uproot you from God. But you have to learn to do what the rest of us did. We've got to learn to do the word and grow our faith on purpose now what jesus said this he says and peter calling to remembrance said unto him master behold the fig tree which you cursed is withered away and died jesus unto him have faith in god for verily i say unto you what whosoever shall sound to this mountain be thou removed be thou cast in the sea and shall not shall not down his heart but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever i say unto you Therefore I say unto you, what things have you desire? When you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. You see now, this is how faith works. Faith is always in the now. Hebrews 11 one says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance. Okay, so if I go to the shop, I use my credit card, my debit card, I can use cash. That's the substance I use to obtain in the secular world the things I want. In the spiritual world, credit cards and debit cards and cash doesn't count. You can sow into the spiritual realm, but you can't pay God for anything. So what we have to learn to do, what things serve you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it, and you shall have it. When do, I be, when do I believe? I believe the moment I pray, God heard me. In Daniel chapter 10, we saw when Daniel approached God. And then after 21 days, the angel appeared to Daniel and says, From the first day you prayed, I was sent. But the prince of Persia hindered me. Now, the from moment you pray, whatever you believe in God for, the moment you pray, God has heard your prayer. Now, the difference is where, we, where a lot of us fall down, is the start the middle it's the middle part the waiting part the trust in god part believing god part that even though we haven't seen it yet we believe it's going to come and i'm telling you some things take a week some things take days some things takes years but you know what as long as you keep your faith strong in god it doesn't matter what it looks like he says now faith is faith is always now if I'm going to get it one day, this is not faith. He says, when you pray, believe you receive it. So the moment I pray, I've got it. I'm just waiting for the full manifestation of it. Most of us are moved by the time, not understanding God's timing. God does not move according to time. God moves according to his plans, his will, and his purposes. So whatever you believe in God for, if you haven't got it yet, sometimes the scripture says you have not because you ask not. So we presume God will give it to us. Then it says you ask and receive not because you ask and miss that you might consume it on your own lust, your own flesh. So there's different, you've got to get the heart right in every area when you pray. Can you say amen? Now, look at Luke chapter 5. No, with Genesis, let me show you this first. Genesis chapter 1. So many times, it's, you read Genesis chapter 1 and it says, and God said, and God said, and God said, and let there be light. There was light. God spoke, I think, nine times. God said, he said and God said. Now, what does, do, does God need to put that in his word that he spoke it so many times? If you look at Genesis chapter 1, it could have just says God spoke and created the heavens and the earth, right? But now it goes, uh, verse 2 says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Verse 6, verse 6 says, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the, the waters. And, uh, and verse 9 says, and God said, let the waters up under, be under the heaven. And God said, let us let the earth bring forth grass. That's verse 11. 
verse 14 and God said let there be light in the firmament of the heaven and it just goes on and God said verse 20 let let the waters bring forth abundantly why has God spoken so many times when he could just said and God spoke and created the heaven and the earth God has shown us the power of words the power of our words Hebrews uh, not Hebrews uh, Romans 4 17 says that God calls the things that be not as though they are what we need to do is stop looking at things as we see them and start calling them as we would want to see them the power of words uh, uh, Proverbs 18 21 death and life are in the power of our tongue so what we need to do is stop looking at the circumstances and begin to look at the bigness of the God who's over all the circumstances and everything else if you get to this place where you don't start believing God for a house in one day, you know what we started doing? We believe God for bus fare. We believe God for the small, we believe God for food. Give us this day our daily bread. We believe God for food. We believe God that we, our electricity will stay on. Uh, we believe God that the bills will be paid and we could pay our rent. It was just the small things that we believe God for. And as we saw God began to move on our lives and we see God doing things for us, after a while, it got to the place where all our needs were met. We had no, no, no needs anymore. So what we, do, what we did then, we began to believe God for the needs of other people. Even now, you know, with Uganda and all the different places we support, we, are, we believe God every month. Every month we send at least, at least 5,000 pounds to Uganda every month to help them with the, the, the children there and the orphans there to help them. Every single month we do that. I believe God every month that we'll have that money to send to them. And we've been doing it for a while now and God has never failed. Amen. So I'm to encourage you tonight, begin to stop calling the negative and begin to speak the positive. It's so easy to drop into the negatives, not realizing death and life is the power of your tongue. When you challenge God, when you say, God, what I pray for this, why is it not here? You've just shut down everything you, you asked for because you now annihilated it with the words of your mouth. I'm, believe, I'm still believing God for stuff. Some things I'm only seeing now after many years. But you know what? I'm not serving God for what I can get from him. I'm serving God because I love him, because he's the most amazing, amazing, I, I don't want to belittle him and say person. He is the most, he's amazing God. He is amazing father. He's an incredible, the only true and living God. There's no other God beside him. He's the one that can answer my prayers. He's the one that gives me peace. He's the one that gives me wisdom. He's the one that gives me knowledge. He's the one that gives me understanding. This God is an awesome God. And he, watch this, he's, he's invited us. He says, when we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us. He says, when we search for him with all our heart, we'll find him. Do you get that? He says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. When we do these things, I'm telling you, as you draw close to God, he will draw closer to you. You get so close. And, and if, if, as sure as there's God in heaven, I'm telling this to, tonight. When you get close enough to God, you keep drawing nigh, keep drawing nigh, keep drawing nigh, shutting yourself in the room, praying, seeking God. You keep praying, seeking God. There comes a moment when the voice of God will come close to you. It was the first time I ever heard the voice of God. It went into my bones, my joints, my marrow. I was itching my leg. His voice was coming out of everywhere in my body. I could hear his voice. It went into my, the, the marrow, my bones. And it, you just become addicted. And I'm saying to you, you don't, you may, you don't have to see him to, to trust him. Because when you do what he says, he will reveal himself in his word, through his word to you. Amen. Now, look at, with me. What I say, Luke, uh, Luke chapter 5, please. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke 5. Luke chapter 5. Watch this. Let's go from verse 3. Luke 5 verse 3 says. Sorry, no. Luke 5 verse 17. Not, not 3. Verse 17. It says, And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which will come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal 
and behold men brought in a bed a man which was taken with palsy and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before Jesus now I'm asking you tonight can God see our faith on a daily basis what does our faith look like when we're trusting God because I know uh, this generation we have today tend to trust in ourselves more. You know, we earn whatever, 5000 a month or 3000 whatever it is, and we budget and we budget. So we always have, you know, we have X amount for this, X amount for that. We have X amount for, for social. And we do that. And after a while, we're just trusting in ourselves. Let me tell you, God wants us to rely on him on a daily basis, every day. Every day I wake up and I always pray, God, give me wisdom today. Give me, grant every member of this church protection from every sign of the wicked one. Give them wisdom, Father God, bless them, increase their wisdom, knowledge and understanding. And when you look at this, they, this man is sick and men bore him. This generation gives up just like that. But watch these men. They're bringing someone who is sick. They don't just give up and say, oh, well, que sera, sera. Watch what they do. They brought him in a bed, a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. When they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up onto the housetop and led him down through the tiling which, the, which in the couch into the midst of Jesus before Jesus that will get anybody's attention right it says and when he saw their faith when Jesus saw their faith when Jesus saw your faith when he saw that his faith their faith this is what he said he said man thy sins have been forgiven when he saw their faith immediately it got his attention they said there's multitudes there. They couldn't get into the room because the, the house, there was multitudes there. They found a way where there was no way, apparently, and they load him down. When they load him down, Jesus' focus shifted from the multitude to the one whose faith he can see. And um, let me tell you now, in the spiritual realm, your faith in God will stand out amongst devils and demons. They will know that you're not the one that they can play with because your faith in God is unshakable and unmovable. When you're going through trials, I, I, we've been through trials over years. We've been through trials, but not one of you, not one of you could ever come and tell me any day that you've, you've known we're going through trials. Unless you know what we're going through, you could not tell from our expression, from our demeanor. You could never tell that we're going through anything because we made that decision. I said on Sunday, we made that decision years ago. We're going to be like this. We're not going to go down or up when we get blessed. We're not jumping up when we get going through trouble. We're not going to drop down. We're staying like this. What, no matter what comes in our lives, good, bad or ugly, we, our faith remains the same in God. He's, he's God in the good times. He's God in the bad times. Whatever we're going through, we stay on the same level of faith with God. We are not moved by blessings, though as nice as it is to get blessings. It, it, when I say we're not moved, we're not going to start bragging. We're not going to start posting and showing people what God has done for us. We, we will give our testimony. But this is the level we stay on all the time. And some of you, you you're up one day because things look good. The day you get a bad letter, you drop down again. Your faith must be consistent with God. God must see you at all times, no matter what, you, what you're going through, what you're facing, what, you, what you're being blessed with. Your faith in God remains the same consistently. Can you say amen? I'm trying to get you to this place where you're not easy. I see people, they come in. You can read them like a book. You watch them and you can see they're going through something at home. Something's wrong. Your face is dropped. Listen, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is not happiness. The joy of the Lord is not because you've got something in the post or you've got a new car, you've got a new house. That's not the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is a spiritual thing. When, it's, when you're going through stuff, the joy wells up within you and deals with the problems in your life. You, you begin to worship God when it seems like this is not the time to worship God. This is the time for me to cry and weep and moan and groan and complain. No, that is not the way forward. Jesus Christ wants to see your faith. When he looked at this man's faith, he immediately, it caused attention. Faith always gets God's attention. Can you say amen? And that man got up and walked out of that place. Why? Because, because 
he, Jesus saw his faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith, listen, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, you cannot please God. So what am I going to do? How do I grow my faith? Every time I hear the word of God, I make a decision. I'm going to do the word. I, listen, what I'm telling you now, you, you may not think we've had to learn this. Because some of you put us up here as though we didn't have to grow. When I got saved, I was so angry. I was so bitter. I had so much on, on the inside of me that I was raging from things that happened to me as a child, as an angry person. And when God says to me, there's a brother in the church who I, I did not like at all. He was like the one, the worship leader. And he's always telling you, stand up when the worship, raise your hand, put it, do it. All those, I like, let me choose how I worship God, you know. And, and I begin to feel a little resentment toward him. And I'm driving, I was at the pond in Thornton Heath in in Croydon as at the ponds as waiting around about and God said to me bless pray for him and I said I, I I just knew when God told me pray I knew God was gonna bless him and it took me a while to do it I think a couple of days because I knew if if I did it God I know what God's gonna do but I knew he's gonna bless him I didn't want him to get blessed and I would I'd be praying Lord blah 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 Lord blah blah and it got stuck in my throat eventually I, I let it out I said Lord bless my brother and a, a week or so later someone gave him a three-bedroom house fully carpeted everything brand new carpet debt free I'm like oh God but you know what after that it's not just he got blessed he got blessed with a house but I got blessed in my heart that now I can bless people. I can bless my enemies. Pray for those that curse me. Pray for those that despitefully use me. Because when you, when you do the word of God, especially to your enemies, when he says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. When you do those things, what it does, it blesses you on the inside. That my faith in God now has grown so much that when it comes to forgiving people, praying for my enemies, it's not a problem at all. So if you learn to do the word of God, you're going to grow some of you you won't let go of your past you won't let go of what someone did to you you're looking back all the time you can't walk forward looking back over your shoulder it's like if you want to see what that looks like if you drive go into somewhere quiet and drive just using your rear view mirror and see how many times you're going to crash it's exactly what happens in life every time we keep looking back oh so and so did this to me so and so did that to me and all you're doing is you're messing up your future you can't move forward with holding on to your past there must be a place we let go have faith in god whatever you're going through today the best thing I know to say is, Lord, I, I don't understand, but I trust you. So whatever you tell me to do, Father God, I'm going to do it. I don't understand. There's so many times. I did, I, you know, the many things. When I went to church, I was completely green. Completely green. When Bishop Ramsey called me to his office, he said, Brother Douglas, you must tithe. I said, Bishop, what is that? He says, he says, everything you get, you must give God the first fruit, the tenth of it. And I've been doing it for years. I heard it one single time. Some of you hear this over and over and over. But you know why we can't do it? Because we have no faith in God. The first tithe we gave, <clears throat> this is before God. The first tithe we gave was, I think it was 10 pounds. Um, before God, we had nothing in our house. I know some of you find it hard to believe. But in the day, we had nothing. We did not have a grain of rice in our house. We were going home hungry again. Um, but then as, as we did the tithe, we, we, went to the, we went to the aisle. And a lady called Sister Andrews. She put 20 pounds in my wife's hand. And I said, God, this is it. I'm, I'm sold. I, I'm convinced. <laughs> All the time, no one ever gave us 20 pounds. To you, 20 pounds may not be a lot. 20 pounds was more than week shopping for us. So I'm saying to you, just learn to trust God. Don't try to understand. You cannot understand God. You cannot figure God out. When you think you've got him in a box, he's, he's, he's much bigger than that. Whatever he says unto you, like his, his mother Mary said to, the, to the, the men, whatever he says to you, just do it. If you just do what God says, when he says forgive, just it's not an emotion, it's a choice. Just let go of your past. Can you say amen? Some of you are still holding on too much to things behind you. This is why you can't move forward. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. What does faith in God look like? <clears throat> faith in God is my reliance on God. I have not seen him physically, God Almighty. I've not seen him physically. 
but I do know he's more real than anything in this world. My faith in him is unshakable. My faith in God, I'm not, I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what men say. My faith is in the living God. And if you are moved by opinions of men, when, you know, people tell you stuff because they're jealous of you, there are people on assignment, there's a sign to destroy your life. There's one lady used to be with us. Um, she went to another church. I warned the pastor, this woman is coming. And because she gave money, he didn't listen to me. And now he's had to put her out of the church because she's a witch. And that's what she does. She goes from church to church. But because she gives money, money many of the pastors are, are moved by the money. In fact, one church has now appointed her the best giver in their church in front of the whole congregation. Now she's going to manipulate that church. Our faith should not be in man. Our faith must be in God. Amen. Men, men will let you down every time, but God will never fail you. Amen. So have faith in God. Whatever you're doing, do it with, by, through faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. I don't know if what that means to you, but for me, not being able to please God, I have to learn to trust him regardless of what it looks like. Amen. Look at Luke 17 with me. Luke chapter 17. Luke 17. Luke chapter 17. It says this from verse 3. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespass against you, rebuke him. If he repent, forgive him. You get this? If, if, he, if, he, if he repents, forgive him. And if he trespass against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turns again to you saying, I repent, you shall also forgive him. <laughs> this is a, this is a, these disciples heard this. This is a lot. Even I think for our, the people in our church, that will seem like a lot. Seven times a day? I mean, it's actually 70 times seven a day. And he goes on to say that after they heard this, they said, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, a mustard seed is a, like you could barely see it, a tiny, tiny little seed. It says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might sound to the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. Now watch this, a seed, a seed, a, 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 a seed like this is no good in your hand. And I think this generation don't seem to be seed conscious. Seed conscious is my giving, it's my behavior, it's my attitude. Seed time is the way I treat other people, it's the way I talk about people, it's the way I judge or not judge people. Seed, everything we do is a seed. Seed time is the way I treat my wife. Seed time is the way I treat my children. Seed time is the way I treat, treat the congregation. It's seed time and harvest time. If you sow bad seed, expect bad harvest. It is basic as that. Husbands and wives, when you sow bad seed, you know, speaking words of negativity, cursing, doing all these kinds of stuff, let me say this to you. Those things will bring bad seed in your life arguing and arguing for days arguing in front of your children it will bring a harvest in your life many children today in our church based on the way the parents are many children in our church will not serve god when they get older not because of god not because of church but because of what they're seeing in their household many shall turn away some may even become lesbians or homosexuals based on the way the parents have been raised in them listen you say i'm not gay i'm not doing it no when they look at a man and a woman and they see a man and a woman fighting each other arguing all the time let me tell you this some children and i'm speaking from experience because I've counted enough of them. Some children turn away from the institution of marriage because what they saw in their home does not reflect Christ. And many of them have walked away from God. I wish sat with people in their 50s and 60s who are still single because the image they lived in called marriage, marriage and home. It was ungodly and they, 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 they divorced, they broke up. And I've watched people in their 50s and 60s who are still struggling with that trauma they went through in their home. And I'm saying to you, let me tell you, your home should be a place of peace. Your home should be a place of joy. It should be when, when your children wake up in the morning, they're excited to be with mommy and daddy. 
They are excited. If you want to argue, go in the garden. Or, or better still, just deal with the anger in your life. And stop venting on other people. Uh, venting on your husband. Venting on your wife. Venting on your children. What do you think that's going to do? You think it's going to bring the blessings of God on your life? Let me tell you, husband and wife, families, let me say this to you. Matthew 5, 25, Matthew 12, 25 says this. A city divided amongst itself will not stand. A nation divided amongst itself will not stand. A household divided amongst itself will not stand. If you continue in your ways, the Bible's clear, you're not going to make it. You have to make changes, drastic changes, like the biggest change you can make is die to yourself. You die to yourself and you say, God, you know what? I don't want to be like this anymore. I want a peaceful life. I want a peaceful home. Do you know it takes more out of, you, more, more out of us to be angry and vengeful and hateful, hateful than it is to be loving and kind? It takes two to argue. I know in my house, I want peace in my house. I want the peace of God. I want when I wake up in the morning, it's a wonderful day. When the sun is shining, you open the curtains and you're grateful to God just to be alive. Amen. So I encourage you to just trust God. Instead of having to argue about everything, why don't you go to the Father? Wife, if you have a husband that's, that's, that's irritating and miserable, instead of fighting them, why don't you just go to God and say, Lord, your word declares, it's written. That I should come bold to your throne of grace. That I may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Father, I, have, I, have, I need grace and I need your help. This man I'm married to. This woman I'm married to. I need you. I cannot change him. You're the creator. You're the only one that knows how. And Father God, I ask you now in the name of Jesus Christ to help me to bring peace to this home. You know, years ago when I was, was 15... Before I, before I got my license, we had, I had a car, I bought a car, and I would take the engine out, take the gearbox out, and I'd wash it down, I'd put it back, and I'd go back another week, take it out again, put it back again. Um, but you know, now, after they changed the cars, that was when life was simple. Now, I look at the cars, I wouldn't even know where to start to take out an engine. I have to take it back to the manufacturer. And I encourage you, go back to the manufacturer, the one who made man and made woman. Who, the one who says, and he made everything and it was good. And find out what God's plan is and what God's purpose is for your lives. And stop fighting each other and die to your selfish, self-centered ways. And recognize other people will be impacted by your attitudes and by your behavior. And by your marriage and your way your family is run. Amen. Others are watching you. Somebody is always watching you. Can you say amen? So he says this. He says, Luke. And so he says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, if you have faith as small as that, what are you going to do? As small as it is, a mustard seed, if you plant that mustard seed, as small as it is, if you leave it, it grows to a tree and birds begin to come and nest in that tree. If you start using the little faith you have, the little faith you have, it will grow into a massive, massive force called faith where you can believe God for anything. When the doctor gives you a report, you say, thank you very much, sir. I'm not fighting the doctor, but I do know whom the creator is. The one who created my heart, the one who created my lung, the one who created my liver and every part of my brain, every part of me. That is the one I put my faith in because when doctors and their knowledge is limited and when they give you a bad report, you don't faint, start crying. You go back to the manufacturer, go back to the king, the God who made you and you go into the throne of mercy and grace to, to and ask him, Lord, this is what the doctor said. But Father God, what do you say? I know what you say in your word. It is written, you're wounded for my transgressions. You're bruised for my iniquities the chest on my peace upon you by your stripes i was healed two three two thousand years ago father i trust your word can you say amen and don't uh, get me doctors are not bad they're not evil but they're limited with their knowledge most every most men on this earth will only use less than 10 percent of the brain power that we have if god gave us all of that my god <laughs> he had to restrict it because we, we even with the 10 percent, look what man is doing now amen so let, let me say this you're not going to know the, your strength of your faith until you face your trial. Talk is cheap sometimes. Oh, I bless God. Remember Peter says, I, I'll die for you. I, it, no matter what you go through, I'll die for you. Jesus says, before the, the night ends, before the cock will crow three times and you'll deny me. Peter says, I will die for you. And all the others says the same thing. When it came to the problem, everyone ran away. It's one thing, let me tell you, worshiping God on a Sunday, singing the songs we sing, 
raising our hands, jumping around, dancing, praising God. If unless that is tested, you cannot say your faith is strong. It is when your faith is tested, that's when you're going to find out. Because you know what? We've been through so many trials. Not one time have I ever, ever cried out to God says, why me, Lord? Why me? Because I already know why me. Uh, Psalms 34, 19 says, many of the afflictions are righteous, but the Lord delivers from them all. So when I go through it, I know there's an end date because he promised he will deliver from them all. Can you say amen? So whatever you're facing today, your faith, unless your faith has been tested, you will never know how strong your faith is. It's all good when we have money, we give. We can give when we have, but what happens when you don't have and you have the choice between paying your rent and paying your tithe first? What, what do you do then? When, when this, 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 there's, no, there's trials coming in your life where there's not enough food, and what do you do then? Pay your tithe or do you pay, buy food? This is where it's tested, and we, we've done it. In fact, we had a house in South North Hill, and <clears throat> when we were losing that house, we increased our giving more than we ever did before. And everything got worse and it got worse and it got worse. And I went to court. Then they said, the judge was very lenient. And he says, you know, uh, Mr. Goodman, what do you need? You need more time? Yes, sir. I need more time. Uh, what do you want to do? And instead of saying pay less, I said pay more. <clears throat> so I could have said, I was paying 600 a month. I should have said, can I pay 100 pounds for the next year just to get back on my feet? But instead of that, lacking wisdom, I said, I'd give him 700 or 800 a month. I couldn't pay 600. And in the end, I just went back to the court and I said, Your Honor, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do it. I, I've got to give him the house. I give up the house. And we moved into a dirty, stinking council flat, uh, which should not be, it, should be, it shouldn't be legal for anyone to live in something like that. And we stayed there for 14 months, 14 months. You know what we did? The first week we, got, we went into that place, the first week, every Saturday, we'd go and look at houses. Every Saturday, every single Saturday, we will go out and look at houses. And we did, that, we did that for 14 months. 14 months. We went to Milton Keynes and we, went to, we, st we stayed at one of my wife's um, family's house. And the, we went looking for houses there. We looked in every area down this end. Uh, Croydon, Purley, Kent. We went everywhere. Barnet, everywhere. <clears throat> Couldn't find the house. We went to one house. As soon as I saw the house, I said, this is our house. Plus he says, no, let's look again. We came right back to that house. We bought that house. You know what? What we lost was a three-bedroom de semi-detached with a small garden. What we got was a four-bedroom detached, double garage, and a beautiful garden, and a drive as well. I'm saying to you, <laughs> what, just because it looked bad doesn't mean that God has left you alone. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you even to the end of this age. So whatever you're going through, don't, don't faint the day of adversity because he says your strength is weak. <clears throat> don't give up. Don't stop well doing because of what you're going through. Don't, don't do, that's exactly what the devil wants you to do. The Bible tells us resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Whatever you're going through, do the opposite of what he's trying to get you to do. When he wants you to cry over your problems, rejoice and thank God. Thank God, worship God in the morning. Despite, I don't care how bad it looks, wake up in the morning and begin to thank God for his goodness, thank God for his mercy. I worship you, Father. I give you all the honor. I give you all the glory. Sing a song of rejoicing. Amen. That is your faith in action. <clears throat> God will see your faith. The devil will see your faith in action. When you're not bowing your knee to circumstances, but you in, in in other words that like job in job chapter one when when the devil came and he, he says says job only worships you because of what you give him and god says you can take what he has but don't touch his body you see where job he lost the house he, his houses he lost his family he lost his animals he lost everything and then it, it, his wife is saying to him job why don't you curse god and die that's the voice of the devil <clears throat> job says you speak like a foolish woman don't you know the Lord gives and the Lord takes away? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Job bowed down and bowed his head to the living God. And he went through another trial with his health. And at the end, in, uh, you see where Job, everything Job lost was restored double to him. And I'm saying to you today, don't give up, don't quit. Don't, be, don't listen to voices of negativity. Get rid of the friends that keep telling you God can't, God will not. God, you, just get rid of those people out of your lives because...
Those are the voices of the devil. When they br he bring people into your life, oh, if God was so good, why would this be happening to you? Let me tell you, God is good. And all of us will go through trials. Like, you know, some people say, why, why is God, why so many bad things happen to so many people when God is supposed to be so good? Everything, listen, bad things happen to Jesus. And let me tell you why bad things happen to a lot of us. Our choices. We choose where we go. We choose what we do. We choose the company we keep. We, keep, we choose the, what we watch. We choose what we eat. How can you complain about your mother dying of cancer when on, clearly on the packet it says if you keep smoking, it's gonna lead, it can lead to cancer? How do we eat? How we, we know that if we eat the wrong food, it's going to mess us up on the inside. But you still keep eating processed food and eat the stuff that you don't even know what's in it. And then you get some cancer and you say, God, why is this happening to me? We must look back at what we did to get where we are. Can you say amen? So I encourage you, if your faith being tested, look, at me, look with me in the book of Genesis chapter 22. God will try your faith. God will try your, your, your belief in him. Um, everyone, he will try our faith to see what really you believe. It's one thing saying, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. Jesus, I worship you, I give you the glory, honor, and the praise. I magnify you, I love you, Lord, with all my heart. But what do you say when there's a trial in your life? When God challenges you, what do you say? What do you do? In Genesis chapter 22, <clears throat> we see Abraham, Abraham, who has been waiting for a child for 25 years. 25 years this man's been waiting for a child he went he had uh he had he went with Hagar. hey guy his 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 wife told him take my maid and produce a child and that didn't go too well for them ishmael came and you'll find in your life many times before the isaac comes ishmael will show up first and so don't be some don't, some of you ladies looking waiting to be married many times ishmael will come along first and let me tell you what ishmael feels or looks like something inside of you you want to be married but something inside of you says no this is not the one listen to that voice because that will if you override that voice then you won't hear that voice anymore you get messed up many comes in the guise of being a good man a good husband but and you got to know that this is not always the case they know what to say men are not stupid they know what to say to get women to respond so don't be so quick and, and desperate because if you're desperate you make the wrong decisions <clears throat> so after after this child is born it says and the, and it came to pass after these things that the lord god did test he doesn't tempt you he, he tests you he test abram and said unto him abram and he said behold here i am he said take now thy son thine only son isaac whom you love get thee into the mountain of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i should i should tell you of that is a, can you can you can you imagine this 25 years for this child his mother was 90 years old when she got pregnant his father's over 100 how I many you know, after this you don't know you're going to get any more and god says this this is the one god has chosen but God wants to test Abraham's heart. I think God tests many of our hearts many times. Some of you, you get blessed and God will say, give this. And you're like, but this is all I have. Then you fail the test. I've seen business people where God will bless them in business. And what a lot of us do, I, I used to do this. You stick to just the amount you can give without it actually impacting your income. We, we do this thing where we, we're so careful, we'll give just this much but we still rely on ourselves. We just about tithe, but we, we never open enough to say, God, use me. What do you want me to do? Uh, what, what can I do to do for your kingdom? And I've seen uh, men who have, have yielded like this to God, where God uses them, where whatever they have, they don't see as their own, they see as God's. And I've seen, we've done it many times. I just write a check. I was, we passed the church in, in uh, South Norwood, um, Holmesdale Road in South Norwood. Many, many years ago, they had a sign up. They're restoring the church. And I just went in. I wrote a check for 5,000 pounds. That's not a tithe. That's a seed. I, I wrote, we, we both went and wrote a check for 5,000 pounds. Give it to the pastor um, to help towards their renovations. Now, we walked away from that. We don't know what's happening. But guess what? We went back there. My mother-in-law, my father-in-law both got saved. We led them to Christ. And that's the very church they went to. 
How amazing is God? <laughs> How amazing is God? The, the church we sowed the seed in was the church that they ended up going into. God is amazing. So this is where you've got to learn to be open to God. You know, some of you, 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 you give some your particular who you give your love to, who you give your money to. Uh, and you're limiting God on your blessings. For me, I'm kind to everybody I can find. Everybody I can help, I help them. Because you know why? I see the seed. Amen. God sees my faith. So uh, he says to Abram, take your son, your only son whom you love. And he said, take him now, your son. And then we go verse 3. And Abram rose up early in the morning. I didn't see Abram ask God why. I didn't hear Abram saying, but God, I've waited 25 years for this child. But Lord, what's going to happen after I kill him? What, what's going to happen? Nothing like that. In fact, if you read in the Hebrews 11, you'll see Abraham actually believed when he killed the child, God was going to raise him back up again. Amazing faith. <clears throat> he says, he rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of the young men with him and Isaac his son and cleaved, the, uh, cleaved him and Isaac his son and cleaved the wood, the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. It says, Then on the third day, Abram lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abram said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass. I and the lad will go up yonder and worship and will come again to you. Already he's believing. You see, he knows it. God's, even if he kills the child, somehow he's coming back with the child. And Abram took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son and took the fire in his hand and a knife they went both of them together Isaac spake and said unto his father Abram and he said my father he said here I am my son he said behold the find the wood but father where's the lamb for the burnt offering Abram said my son God will provide him a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together they came to the place which God had told him of and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order, bound Isaac his son, laid him on the altar of wood. This is amazing. That child was obviously old enough to understand what a sacrifice is, and he is allowed his father to bind him. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know, for now I know, for now I know, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast withheld, not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. Do you get it? Do you get it? When you are willing to let go of everything, you cannot outgive God. It's impossible. You cannot outgive God. He says, because so many times I've emptied my pockets on, in, in churches, wherever I've been, I've emptied my pockets. I've written checks. I've given. I've just, it's, just, it's just the, 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 the Christian way. And he says, because, and Abraham said, lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is my provider. As it, say, as it is said to this day, in the mount the Lord shall be seen. Watch this. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I've sworn, saith the Lord, well, because you have done this thing, what thing? I'm willing to give you all my very best. Because I've, you've done this thing and have not withheld, withheld thine only son, thy son, thine only son from me, that in blessing I will bless you and in multiplying I'll multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the sea, seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. God saw his faith. Can God see your faith? Can he look at you and see that this is a person that really trusts me? When you give whatever you're giving, God asks him for the ultimate sacrifice. The thing that he loved most, we see with the rich young ruler, when Jesus says to him, he, he says to Jesus, uh, Jesus loved, loved him, looked at him and says, one thing you lack, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, take up your cross, come follow me. It says that the young man went away grieved. That's like this generation. When God, instead of giving to God, we are more concerned about keeping what we keep for ourselves than we, we sow into the kingdom. Many people, they just, listen, everything, my, my life is not, my income is God's tithe and that's the end of it. Mine is whatever God wants me to do with whatever, it doesn't belong to me. 
Whatever God wants me to do with it, I'll gladly do it. If he says, give all that's in your bank account, I'll do it. It doesn't matter because I trust him. And we are so trusting in ourselves rather than trusting God. We give him this part, but we're not giving him all access to all of our lives. We give him so much on a Sunday of our lives, but during the week, we won't come aside and shut down and go and seek God. We give him a portion on a Sunday. God, I'll give you a Sunday service uh, and that's it. I'll give you a Monday prayer, but I can't do Friday as well. And we limit God to, to access to our lives, access to our funds, access to everything we have. We've got to get to the place where God can see our faith. Let me tell you, faith moves the hand of God. I said, faith moves the hand of God. When you're walking in faith, uh, we're so busy about ourselves, not realizing the, the true blessings of God is when we lay down everything before him. If when we lay down everything before him, we see in the book of Acts chapter 4, when, the, when they all sold everything they had, laid at the apostles' feet and get distributed so nobody lacked. That was a different breed of people. Today's Christian is like, oh, but what about this? What about, and we're so caught up with ourselves until we get to this place where our faith can be seen by God. We're not going to really see the blessings of God as we'd like to see it. Can you say amen? I hope this helping you. I don't have much longer left, but let me go through some stuff with you here. James 2.17 says, turn there quickly with me to James chapter 2 verse 17. James chapter 2 verse 17. James 2 verse 17 says that without faith, Verse 2, verse, James 2, verse 17. Verse 17 says, Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. There must be, faith must have corresponding action. If you say you believe in God, there must be corresponding action. And it's more than words alone. If you're sick in your body, you have to get up and start moving about. Doing something. Do, if your legs hurt you, do something. I, I, you know, the other day I told you, I was, my leg it was burning me on the inside my on the outside of my calf it was so it burned me so much i went to watford and i had to stop i've never happened to me before in my life i actually had to stop and and sit down because i could hardly walk and i went i came home and I, I first i got the physiotherapist i went to them and she's twisting me and doing all of this and she says come back next week in the meantime, I go into the Word of God and I, I, I looked at the scriptures and I said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was a God, the Word is God, it is written. The Word of good, God is quick, is powerful, sharp, and the twisted sword is written. The Word of God's sword of spirit is written. And so shall my word that be that goes forth in my mouth, it shall not return unto him, me empty of void, but it shall prosper into this thing where I, I sent it. And I remember Jesus sent the word and healed. And I said, I send the sword of spirit now into my body. I send it into my leg right now in the name of Jesus. For it is written, he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, the chastisement of my peace upon him by his stripes. I was healed 2,000 years ago. I send the sword of spirit now to drive out every pain, anything from the kingdom of darkness. I send the sword of spirit to war and drive it out. I, 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 to, I woke up in the morning, not a single pain. I went back to the physiotherapist. I says, I, just to let you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay now. She says, how can that be? I says, God healed me. She says, really? And I said, yes. She said, could you just lie down? Let me check you. And she's twisting my leg. Any pain? No pain. And she twists me. No, no pain. Any pain? No pain. Any pain? No pain. No, it's completely gone. You must have faith in God. You know why I use the word? Because I know it's impossible for God to lie. God's not a man. He should lie. Now the son of man, he should repent. Had he not said it, shall he not do it? He says, so shall my word be that goes forth in my mouth. It shall not return empty of word, but it shall prosper. Listen, it shall prosper in the thing we have sent to. They sent into my leg and it prospered my leg amen you have to trust god on purpose sometimes you know i don't take headache tablets i don't do those things because i have taken my wife always say take some cough mixture and i said but if, if i take it it doesn't help me and i might as well trust god and believe him for the healing amen and you know what your faith begins to grow it just begins to grow so he says faith without corresponding action it, it so faith if it's not works is dead being alone Yet a man may say, Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me, your, show me thy faith without thy works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Thou believest there's one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Yes, every, believing doesn't change anything in your life. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith with, without works is dead? 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Since thou how faith wrought with, that, with, with his works, was, and by works was faith made, faith made perfect. We have to get to the place where we trust God with all of our hearts. I don't care what it looks like, what it feels like. Um, I'm out of time now, but I just want to encourage you. Trust God on purpose. In your sowing, stop limiting God with your finances. Learn to go above and beyond and your faith will grow forgive the, the, when you forgive people don't just forgive the ones you think you like forgive the worst enemies pray god's favor god's blessing on them um just do the opposite to what the the devil wants you to do amen he, he if you if you're not so in love he likes that because if you're not so in love no, nothing's changing if you're not so in finances you're going to have be stay at a certain level all the time if you're not so so all the time you're going to remain the same you've got to grow trust god he'll never fail you amen have faith in god amen thank you for listening tonight before we do go i want to make sure that everyone online here knows jesus christ as lord so many people are in churches today and not understand that is not church attendance that saves you a religious leader came to jesus one night and says jesus we know you come from god because no man can do what you do except god is with him and jesus said except a man be born again you cannot see the kingdom of heaven unless you're born again you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven what does it mean when i'm born again the bible says in man being in christ jesus is a new creation all things are passed away behold all things become new when you have jesus christ come into your heart you've accepted what he did on the cross for you at that moment every sin is forgiven your name is written into the land book of life tonight i want to pray that prayer with you if you don't know jesus christ would you repeat with me if you want every sin forgiven you want your name written in the Lamb's book of life we say with this with me father god in the name of jesus christ i repent of my sins jesus come into my heart i receive you as my lord and my savior from this day forward in jesus name amen if you prayed that prayer congratulations that's the best decision of your entire life please please email the church at v2vchurch at aol.co.uk we want to give you a bible and help you to to get closer to god amen amen and before we do close we're going to receive our tithe and our offering practice giving go past your boundaries go pull down the boundaries you set up around your giving i listen i have never ever obeyed god's word based on my circumstances my circumstances are subject to change we were in, we looked like poverty for five years and i remember when we moved from croydon to milton Keynes. all of a sudden everything changed when we had that we went up there in an old fort cortina and like how we're we going to get my wife was working in Vauxhall. that was a step of faith how are we going to get to Vauxhall? we had dominic we had the children the girls would go to school i took dominic to a nursery right where i lived it was more expensive than a private school in london so i started we suddenly we got a, we went from the cortina we got a mercedes uh, someone let me use it eventually i bought it god always provided has always provided will always provide i encourage you he says honor the lord with your substance with the first fruit of all your increase he says bring all the tithes in the storehouse and, and prove me here with saith the lord of hosts if i'll not open for your window of heaven and pour out for your blessing you'll not have room enough to receive and he says and i will rebuke the devour for your sake many times we're looking for the answer tomorrow but seed time and harvest time sometimes it, it, it takes longer than some but it's, it we remember this once the seed is in the ground the harvest is on its way amen and he says god's not mocked with some man so that shall he also reap if you want abundant harvest you must sow abundant seed if you he says if you sow sparingly you reap sparingly if you sow bountifully you reap bountifully we god has set the order for us to follow it's our choice amen uh, so you can go to our website www v2vcommunitychurch.com um, on the top right hand corner you'll see that you can give online by paypal or by backs whichever you choose but trust god don't wait till you can afford to give because there's no faith in that amen god bless you have a wonderful night don't forget prayer meeting on friday don't forget sunday bring someone to church do the work of evangelist amen god bless you have a wonderful night